Hello and welcome back to Adventurous Way. I'm Matt and today we're going to be working on something a little different. As you can possibly tell behind me, it is raining today. It rained basically all of yesterday. It rained all through the night. And while we're trying to spend as much time as possible felling trees at the moment, we're trying not to work in the rain or when it's really wet. One, it's just not as safe. Climbing over wet logs with a chainsaw, it's just a little bit slippery, it's not that safe, it's not much fun. Chipping wet logs and wet branches is just going to bog down the chipper more and honestly we just don't want to work in the rain, there's just no need to do so and we're going to try and save that for the dry days. Not to mention the fact that running the tractor when it's really muddy is just going to tear up this ground. So when it is raining we're trying to use these days to do something a little bit different. There's a ton of side projects that we've got trying to go on as well and using these rainy days for some of those side projects works really well for us. So that's the plan for today, but before we get stuck into that, let me show you where we're up to so far. So behind me you can see the area that we've been working on clearing. When we started just a few weeks ago, the line of trees was all the way up to here. This front area is the only section that we had cleared, and then you can maybe just about tell the logging trail used to run up through there. We have now cleared this whole area all the way across here. Those yellow flags that you can see and some of the pink flags as well, they are things that we've taped off or flagged off as the edges and corners of buildings, driveways, that sort of stuff to help us orient ourselves. The pink flags over here, and if I can point on the camera, these are uh, indicating roughly where the well is going to be, and then the other ones are the buildings up there. So we have now cleared the entire space around the utility building. As I as I uh, film this right now, we have cleared 112 trees. We've pulled them all down ourselves and uh, chipped them and tried to clean up the site as best we can as we're going. Moving further around, the house is actually going to be over here. It's actually going to come across the road, uh, the logging trail here, and go into that space. We've still got a lot of work ahead of us, not to mention the septic system, which is going to be all the way through these spruce trees over here. So there's a big area there to clear. We've probably got to take down at least, I would guess, another 200 trees, so a lot to do. But today we're not felling trees because of the rain. One of the questions we had on uh, a video recently was about the stumps. What are we doing about the stumps? Are we going to pull them out ourselves? Are we going to leave them? What's the plan? Well, we're not going to try and take them out ourselves. We have tried in the past and the tractor is just not not big enough, not powerful enough to uh, to get those stumps out. Could we rig something up to try and do it? Probably. We could probably get there if we really had to, but when the crew were here doing our driveway, watching their big 20-ton excavator lift stumps out of the ground like they were nothing, I think we're going to save them for uh, for that crew. So that crew will be coming back here in about six weeks' time to grade this whole area, to start digging foundations for us, uh, to start trenching the septic. We are trying to do as much as we can ourselves, but like with the driveway, particularly the big machinery, the big site work stuff, it just doesn't make sense for us to try and do ourselves. The amount of time it would take us to learn how to use those big machines would end up costing us far more than just uh, hiring the job out to people who know what they're doing and can work much quicker, much more safely, and frankly, do a better job than we would be able to do ourselves. So what we've agreed with our contractor is we're leaving these stumps about a foot or so proud of the ground. There's a few that we've left a bit bigger, like this big one here, just because it's a much larger stump. There's a few that we've trimmed off smaller if they were smaller trees and they were kind of in the way for where we were trying to do things. But on the whole, we're leaving them about a foot proud and they can just come in with the excavator and they'll just pluck those straight out of the ground. It made it look so easy last time they did that. So that's the area that we've been clearing. Meanwhile, uh, we are saving as much of the wood as we can. So uh, anything straight and true, uh, we are piling up on our big log piles and those log piles are growing fast. Here is the softwood log pile that we've been working on. And you can see some of the big ones there, they're from where we did the driveway last year. Some of the smaller ones are the ones that we've taken down this year so far. There are some slightly larger ones in here, but I think the largest is maybe 13 inch diameter or so. And then we also have our hardwood pile. These aren't all as, as straight and true. They're not all the same length. All the ones in the softwood pile are pretty well 17 feet long. The ones in here are mixed length because with hardwoods, we don't necessarily need to get eight foot dimensional boards out. We can slab them and do other things with those. This pile though is just about full. If we filled it any more, we wouldn't be able to get through this gap easily. So we have created a new log pile, which is surprisingly hard. Although we've got space here, what we don't have is open flat space yet. And knowing the team's gonna come in and grade, 
we don't want to pile things up in areas that they need to come and grade. So this area here should be pretty safe. So we've created a new logging pile. This section that you can see behind me here, this lower section, this will become a barn in future. And we're not planning to build this anytime soon. The first project is the utility building, then the house, and then later on, we would do want to have some kind of barn. So we saved this flat section near the front at the top of the driveway for that. So in the meantime, this is a good section for us to pile logs. It's not just logs we're producing though. We are using the Woodland Mills WC68 chipper on the back of our tractor, which is working really well. And we are creating, it was a wood chip pile. I'm now uh, calling it our mulch mountain. Look at the size of this thing. I don't know if the scale, you can see how big this is, but it's about six feet tall. It probably goes back 15 feet back there. And it is just full of mulch and wood chips. Some parts of it are, are kind of uh, more like the pine needles and things that came off the spruce or the, um, the needles and things. Others are, are much more wood chippy. Don't know exactly what we're gonna do with all of this yet. We've traded some with some of our neighbors for some fresh eggs, which we love, but others will, or some of the rest will probably compost down and start creating a compost over time. No rush on that, but it'll give us something once we start to create a garden. Some of the other stuff we may then take up onto the trails and uh, spread on the trails, which we may want to do sooner rather than later because the stumps, after they are pulled up, we're planning to take those back into the forest and dump them. The big concern I have with that is I can't take that many at a time on the tractor and it's gonna be a lot of round trips to, to take those in. And I really don't wanna tear up the, uh, the ground as I do that. So we'll see. But for now, the plan is to keep clearing back there. We've got a long way to go for that and then uh, let the contractor deal with the stumps for us. So what about today? What am I doing today? I'm gonna start working on a little side project. I mentioned the garden, and this year we wanna start a garden. Long term, we see ourselves having a garden here where we're able to produce not 100% of the food we eat by any means, but a good chunk of the staples. We'd like to grow some of the food that we eat on a daily basis, some of the vegetables and things. We're not gonna create a massive garden this year. We wanna get the utility building, the house and things in situ first so that we're not climbing over garden beds and all this kind of stuff to get to where we actually want to build. But we do wanna start experimenting with the garden. And so we're gonna do two things this year. The first is we're gonna start a raised garden bed. And we're actually gonna put it just behind the lumber pile. There's a space uh, just to the side over there, uh, roughly where the bucket is. Just, just behind there, that is actually in pretty much full sun during the day. It's out of the way. It's not gonna be where we're trying to drive or pile things or anything else. Although it may come under threat from the, uh, the ever increasing uh, mulch mountain. The project I'm working on today though is making a raised or an elevated planter. So this will actually be off the floor on some legs, about two foot by three foot, so nothing huge. And we wanna put that down by the RV and plant some herbs in there so that when we are cooking, we can go outside and we can grab some fresh herbs from our planter and use them straight away. But when it comes to relocating the RV and we wanna move it up here, our future RV site is pretty much up on the tree line up there at the moment, we'll be able to easily uh, pick that planter up with the tractor and bring it on up. So for that, I need some lumber, which is why I'm up here near our big lumber pile. I'm gonna use some of our two by fours. Um, most of these we're still saving for the solar kiln build, which we want to get to soon, uh, but I'm gonna steal a few to use for the elevated planter. I'm gonna use those for the legs. For the actual body of the plant of the box, if you like. I wanted to use something just a little bit more rot resistant. Again, I don't expect this to last for years and years. If I did, there's other materials I could choose and ways to do it that would last longer. It's more of just an experiment again. But we did stumble across a place last week uh, nearby and it is a sawmill and all they do is mill hemlock into rough sawn boards. Yesterday, we picked up a bunch of these hemlock one by four boards. They're rough sawn, they're green. They're actually probably wetter than our lumber that we made last fall that's been drying over the winter. But this should be enough to get us started on the planter. So I need to get into this pile and pull out some two by fours, take it down to the shipping container where I can work in the, the drier space down there and get building. I'm trying to avoid taking the top off the pile because I want to keep that weight on there. Everything's wet and I just, Honestly, don't, don't want to deal with it. So instead, I'm gonna play a game of Jenga. I'm gonna try and see if I can pull some of these boards out without the whole pile collapsing on me, without making a big mess. If not, I'll take the top off, but let's see if I can do this.
This is the first board I've looked at since we uh, stacked this pile last fall. And it looks pretty straight and it's, it feels lighter than they did last year. We'll check the moisture content later and see, uh, see how it's doing. But for now, that looks pretty good. One out. I'm going to see if I can get two or three more. I tell you, with lumber prices as crazy as they are right now, it is so nice to be able to come up to our own lumber pile, pick out a couple of two by fours completely for free. Not paying $10 each or whatever they are at the moment. Yes, they are rough sawn. These are full two by four inch diameter, not the, oh, sorry, two by four inch dimension, not the inch and a half by three and a half inches that you get for nominal store-bought stuff. Yes, they're a rough texture. They're not planed down and smoothed and surfaced and jointed and things. We could do that if we wanted. Uh, we don't have the tools yet, but we plan to get those at some point soon. For today, I'm not gonna bother. This is absolutely fine. It's gonna be an outdoor project. Even though these have only been air drying over winter, so the moisture content is going to be higher than if they were kiln dried. For what we need right now for an outdoor planter, these are absolutely perfect. I'm here down at the shipping container, which is gonna be my workshop for the day. And I've just noticed a ton of these little bugs on the door. They're all over the bottom down here. We haven't seen these before. They're tiny. They're like, I don't know, a sixteenth of an inch if that long. Little black bugs. I don't know if the camera can even pick these up. All over the door. I don't know what they are. I don't particularly like it. Uh, I don't know what they are though. Uh, there, are, there are birds flying around, but are landing on my truck and things. So I don't know if they've been trying to eat them off here or something. But if you know what these are, let me know. I uh, would love to, uh, love to learn. This is the design that I put together on the computer yesterday. It's nothing super fancy. It's uh, just a raised box, two by four legs with sides and a base made out of one by fours. I've also shown this top band around the top, but that's using one by threes, which I don't have. So I will probably do it without that top band. Uh, we'll just uh, omit that and, uh, and it'll just be the, the bare wood underneath. At some point I'll try and pick up some 1x3s or we'll mill some of our own and, uh, and I can finish it off. But for now I'll just get the, uh, the internal structure complete. The other thing I need is a couple of one by ones that will go underneath that serve as the stretchers for the, the floor slats. I meant to grab those. I was gonna steal some of the stickers from the top, our one by one stickers. I forgot to grab those, but I'll, I'll grab those later when I head back up. For now, lots of things to cut. This is going to be another cordless build using only cordless tools. We do have a generator here in the shipping container if I needed it, but all of our tools are battery operated. We have the, uh, the battery operated DeWalt miter saw that I'm gonna be doing most of the cutting on, taking care because the lumber is a little bit wet, so I'll be extra careful with that, and uh, we'll see how we get on. But really, most of these cuts are very simple. It's all just square cuts, of about five or six different parts, all just the same length. So time to get cutting. things that I like to do when I'm cutting wood like this. It's just rough woodwork, it's nothing crazy, and all the pieces being the same size is actually more important than being a specific size. So what I like to do is I like to cut the first piece, give it the exact length I want it, and then write a T for template on it, and then I'll use that to mark off the next boards, just measure along and scribe down the end with a pencil. And I know I have to cut that pencil line off 
to, to make it the same length, because obviously it's at the end of the board. It's easier than trying to set up a stop block or something else on this wood, and it's gonna reduce the chances that I make an error in measuring one of the boards. This way they come out pretty much all the same size. I'm not having to try and stack them on here, which with green lumber especially, wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't be very safe. So my strategy, just write that T on there. As a reminder, it's a template, then I don't get a compounding error for each one being a little different. They should all be very, very close to the same. So here's an interesting little uh, comparison. This here is a piece of the hemlock that we bought yesterday. This is a two by four that we milled last fall and has been drying through the winter. So not exactly hot, sunny weather. It's a cold Vermont winter. But I can tell just by touch, the moisture content of this is way, way lower and it's definitely dropped since last year. But what does the, the moisture meter say? So if I check the hemlock, first of all, you can see the moisture content in there, 21.3%. Compare that to the moisture content on this one, 13.9%. So the pine, the, the two by four that we milled, still isn't as low moisture content as you would want it to be completely dry and completely stable, but it is significantly drier than when we stacked it last fall, and it's drier than the hemlock we bought yesterday. So I'm actually really impressed with the fact that this two by four has dried as much as it has, and has stayed straight and true. So our stickering and our stacking obviously works really well. Really happy with this, and it's time to mill those down and make some two by four legs. So each leg is an L shape of two two by fours in, a, in an L, and each leg is going to be two foot four or 28 inches tall. So I'm gonna mill these down now. Why 28 inches? No particular reason. We just stood there and said, how high roughly do we want this? And 28 inches is where we landed. It means I can get three out of one of these boards, it'll leave me some left over, but I'm sure we'll find a use for those scraps later. So I just put the meter, the moisture meter, right into the heart of this end piece that I cut off, the two by four, and right in the middle it's 12.8%, so not too bad. All right, so the planter is starting to take shape. You can see I've assembled the two by four legs in an L shape. I was gonna do some pocket screws for that, but couldn't find any pocket screws long enough. So instead I've just done screws from the sides straight through. This being uh, full size two inch lumber makes that a little bit harder. It's a lot thicker, but that feels nice and sturdy. The screws weren't quite as long as I hoped, so I recessed them. I might next time I go out, get some longer screws and pull them through. That'll just help me close up some of these gaps like here where the wood isn't totally straight. You can then see I've used the uh, the 26 inch boards. So the one by fours that I cut 26 inches long, they are on the short side here. You can see they tuck right into the corner. And what that means is 26 inches is two foot two inches. Once you take out the inch on either side, that will leave an inside dimension. So there'll be another piece coming here, an inside dimension up to there of two feet exactly. And then these boards here are three feet long. So you've got an exact interior dimension of two feet by three feet. I'm using just a roofing nail to provide a little bit of spacing uh, between the boards. You can just about see there. Um, that's just a little bit for uh, any wood movement, but also just uh, aesthetically, I thought that would look quite nice from the outside. The boards aren't all the same width, so you can see they don't always quite line up exactly where you'd hope, but for what it is, it's fine. Before I put the fourth side on, I'm gonna go up and get um, some of those one by ones, and I'm gonna run those as kind of rails along the inside where the flooring will go in. And I haven't cut that yet, I didn't want too many pieces floating around at once, but the main assembly is coming together, and I've just got the three more boards then that will make up this side. I am liberally using clamps to hold everything in place. I'm not gluing anything, that way if any particular boards get rotten or twist too much or I want to change them out, I can easily do so and nothing's glued down.
I'm now at the stage where the legs and the sides are assembled. I have screwed in the bottom supports. I only had two inch screws, so I had to be very careful not to punch straight through the two pieces of one inch material. I, uh, I held them back just a little bit, just to stop them going through. I did want to make sure it's secure though, because that's going to be taking a lot of weight because all of the compost will be resting on there. I um, may well just put another couple of screws in those bottom slats just to help support that weight as well. It is now time to break for lunch, but afterwards when I come back, I will make the floor slats and put those in and uh, then to put some landscaping fabric in. I've also found some pallet wood that I've got that actually might be quite a good fit just to create a kind of a top runner that goes around the outside so it's just about the right width it's just a hair over three inches wide and i have got quite a lot of it down there so i'm thinking i might try and pull out some pieces see what i've got and see if i have enough to create a top board because it would really clean this up just so you can't see the top uh, sections here the joins it'll also help protect this end grain in particular from water getting in I should probably do something on the bottom as well to protect the feet. I'm not going to for now. Maybe at some point we'll, uh, we'll paint the bottoms or, or something, but uh, just for now, I'm gonna leave those as is. Okay, so I've got the main box now built. The uh, slats are in the bottom, these are hemlock again. And I've left a gap through the middle of these so that water can drain out. I don't want this to become a big bucket. My next step is I have this weed barrier that I picked up and I'm going to spread that out, it's a three foot wide roll. So I'm going to lay that out in here and up the sides as well and staple it in place. Using the stapler, I was able to add this landscaping fabric, this uh, weed barrier. I added it all the way around. It probably isn't necessary. The main part to put it in was the bottom just for drainage, just to stop the soil and compost falling through the gaps in the slats, but I put it up the sides as well. I thought it looked a little bit better. The last thing I'm gonna do, uh, the pallet wood does actually fit over the top. So I've cut some pieces and I'm gonna uh, place those over the edges now. And hopefully that'll uh, make the whole thing look really tidy and finished. It is just pallet wood, it's not pristine. All the pieces aren't quite the same thickness. So it's gonna be a little bit rough and ready. But again, for this type of project, that's not an issue whatsoever. Okay, so here we have it. This is the finished planter. This Again, this was designed to be cheap, cheerful, quick and easy to put together. It's only got about $20 of lumber in it, the hemlock that we bought. Otherwise, I use some free pallet lumber for the top and the two by fours are things that we milled ourselves. I don't know how long this is gonna last. I'm guessing maybe a couple of years it would last uh, out in the elements. It's not treated, I'm not planning to treat it and that's totally okay. It was just a bit of an experiment. But the inside area there measures two foot by three foot so we can easily plant some, uh, some nice herbs and things in there. It's built solid, I've just lifted it out of the shipping container and this thing is heavy. It is really, really sturdy. We can move it with the tractor. Obviously, once it's full of dirt, it's gonna be way too heavy to lift by hand, but the tractor will have no problems lifting this. It's still early April here, so it's gonna be a couple of weeks before we can actually plant this with some herbs before our, our last frost date happens. But this is now ready to go. It was a good, fun little project. Again, trying out some new skills, some new techniques, and learning to work with green lumber. It is rough and ready. There's a few cracks, a few splits, a few things that aren't perfect. And honestly, I'm totally okay with that for what it is. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.